Wisconsin, and that was we just came off of a great uh, NCAA. We had record crowds. We had great ratings on ESPN. Uh, we were so excited about the new format, which seems to have been a popular, uh, popular hit with, uh, with many of our different client groups. In particular, we hope the media really enjoyed it. We hope we were able to focus quite a bit on the score and give everybody a chance to follow the event. Uh, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't also share my thanks to uh, Coach, Coach Harry and Ashton, uh, Coach Roland, and the guys that he brought with them because they're gonna, they're gonna be great this weekend in promoting what the, uh, what the U.S. championships are all about. We're excited about uh, our partnership with USA Track and Field and uh, we look forward to a fantastic event. We've got a lot of great things between the seniors and the juniors. It kicks off on Thursday, and uh, the U.S. team, all these guys are excited about making the U.S. team and uh, keeping the United States as the number one team in the world. So, on that comment, they'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have on, uh, on the World Championship, on the uh, U.S.A. Can you put the TV numbers into a context um, what I saw was just uh, total numbers of people viewing, but I didn't see rating, and I didn't see just that it was the biggest uh, number of largest number of viewers for an NCAA meet. But how does it compare to? Well, what it, what my understanding of the uh, for the NCAA is, was that in 2014 the ratings were 0.14, unless they were somewhere in the fives. That was the information that. We that we received, uh, but I think you have the raw numbers the same as we do. Uh, I think what's most uh, most important to us was that we were 12 hours of live television. I think what it did, in my view, is it uh, it put us in a position where we were not just appealing to the normal Trek fans, but people who are uh, going through the through their different uh, channels were able to pick this up. You know, just anecdotally, uh, from the texts and the emails and the phone calls that I received, there are people who normally wouldn't watch track and field, uh, really were exposed to it, and hopefully that's created a, that's created a, a platform for future events like the NCAA. When will the work begin on the refurbishing of Hayward Field in advance of the 2021? Well, the 2020 World. 2021 World Championships are going to happen in August of, uh, we think, in 21 or somewhere in that vicinity, either late, late July or early August. We haven't nailed that down yet. We anticipate having the facility up and ready to go by uh, 18, by 2018. So our plans currently call for us uh, doing some construction as soon as the day after the, the uh, Olympic trials in 2016. Nothing until then. We won't do anything, uh, if, and nothing that you would notice. Will any of the construction impact like NCAs or anything like that? Sorry? Will any of the construction cause you to not have meets here, or the you only, get it all done in you know six months here and six months there? And good question. The, the way the the way the plans are currently set up, what we would have is it would be done in two phases. So neither the pre classic nor the NCAA. There any there there we don't have any plans to reschedule those. The potential could be that the University of Oregon during the spring of 2017, maybe just all away meets and not have home meets, but we still haven't really gotten to that yet. Once I sit down with uh, uh, Coach Johnson, and we take a look at what seems to make sense, what makes sense for his schedule in U of O athletes, which is primarily what Hayward Field is all about, and service, uh, we'll make certain that, that there, is, there aren't too many disruptions. Well, I think, you know, I'd, I'd probably answer it this way. I would say that um, all of this information, um, I think, flies against what's happened the last week between the number of kids that were, that, let's, let's take a look at it this way. I look at the last month, month of May, we had the uh, Oregon State meet, had more kids and more spectators than ever. The Prefontaine Classic was a phenomenal uh, success. The NCAAs was a phenomenal success. Here we're selecting the athletes that are going to be, going to be competing uh, for Team USA, the number one team in the world, and we're going to be competing.
competing in Beijing. So I would think that any of this black cloud, so to speak, I think will be overshadowed by all the positives that are going on that will happen this, this week. Uh, of course, uh, all of us are, uh, all of us love the sport. I assume that all the people sitting in this area do. Uh, obviously saddened by all this, but uh, in the end, uh, I feel confident that it'll be, it'll be sorted out. When you, you've coached Neil Ruff, how do you think he'll be impacted at all by all this uh, uh, recent reports? No way I can speculate on what, uh, you know, how Galen feels or doesn't feel about this. Uh, I certainly don't think that, I'm sure he's not happy about it. Uh, but in the end of the day, he's, he, he has been a great competitor for the, in high school, for the U of O, uh, at the World Championships, at the Olympic Games, and I assume he'll figure out how to, how to sort this out and compete uh, in the USA's. We're fully anticipating that being the case, and it'll be successful. You know, away from the best place to change LA, I worry, always worry about anything that could be a potential distraction, but I think that the sport is strong enough. It's been a strong, it's been a strong sport for uh, since it started, and I think that the momentum that we have going into this, uh, into the USA's, and once again selecting this best team uh, in the world to compete in Beijing, I think in the end it will uh, actually triumph. And I believe that we have a phenomenal group of athletes that are going to be competing. And I think that all the hard work that they've done comes to a, comes to, uh, comes to a peak here at the U.S. Championship, then again at the World Championship. So I choose to spend my attention looking at those positive side. I think it's great that the meet showed well in L.A. I think it showed well looking at ESPN's uh, information that they released, I think it showed well in a lot of major cities. So that's a really good thing for the sport. I think we have good momentum going forward. The Lauren Fleshman piece, you, I'm, just, I'm sure you saw that. You came across as kind of one of the good guys in this. Essentially, you know, she said that there's kind of some of this gray area stuff that she could take as, more asthma medication than she felt was medically necessary. And you kind of advised her, well, you know, you might want to think twice about doing that. So did, did you have any concerns about some of the stuff maybe that Alberto had been doing? Did you ever talk to him about that? Or just kind of what are your thoughts in general just kind of about even some stuff that's more sort of gray area and kind of related to what Lauren, Lauren said about you? Because you kind of gave her some moral guidance there. But I don't know if you ever said anything to Alberto on your own or had concerns that you didn't say. Or do you have any comments on that? Well, I would, I would say the part about you saying I'm, I was came across as a good guy, that yeah. part, yeah, I think I am. No, I think, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, what I would say is that Lauren, uh, Lauren expresses her views. Um, I don't necessarily remember the exact uh, conversation. I think she was struggling uh, with her ability to be able to perform at the level she wanted to compete, she was sorting out information, and just like any other advice any coach would provide to her, I tried to give her a good context of how to approach and use practical information. In terms of conversation with Alberto, no, I've not had a conversation with him about this at all. Some of the uh, athletes who've been asked for a response have said that um, it's good that these allegations are out in the open, that as opposed to being whispered rumors, I guess. Um, and it kind of shines a spotlight on all of the gray area. I mean, is there, is it good that these allegations are out? Do you think there's too much gray area? Are there some tweaks that need to be made uh, to therapeutic use exemptions and things like that? Well, I think if you look at if you look at this all of this information and you look at it in the in the context, I think that every coach and every athlete. They're out there to perform at their highest level. And, and of course, all of us who love the sport believe in a pure, clean sport. And uh, anything that casts uh, a light on that that isn't 
along those lines is, uh, you know, is, is a problem for the sport itself. I don't know that I could comment on what the, what the rules are. I don't know them well enough. I would say in terms of what's legal and what's not, not legal, I think that all I can comment on is what you know, my position and my position is that we would encourage kids to stay away from that line and we would expect them to be able to perform at the highest level by good, hard work. And, um, and, uh, but, if, but I would quick to say that if there is something that I, I think we would be remiss and we would just automatically say, well, there's no exception, we just do this. I mean, there are very legitimate concerns and the athletes need to be in a position where if their medical, if medical treatment or advice is, uh, has them using whatever the, whatever the, the um, whatever, whatever the, uh, the medication would be, remedy it, they should be able to. I mean, everybody, everybody knows the rules. And uh, I have confidence in, uh, in USADA and WADA, and I assume that they will, uh, they will review these and they provide those, uh, that, that form for those athletes to research that information. So I don't know that I can comment any more than that. Thanks. Any other questions on the USA Championships? You miss coaching ever? Do I miss coaching ever? I think that, uh, yes, of course. I miss the opportunity to interact on a regular daily basis with the athletes, but I think that um, we're in a position where we've been able to uh, help the, I think the athletes that are here and that are performing at the U.S. Championships from the OTC. Uh, we're really excited about what they can do. The athletes that are in a position to potentially do well from the University of Oregon. I think we've been able, to, I've been able to help do some other things that would help them be not just good athletes, but also be able to grow their brand. Any uh, early estimates for attendance next week? You know, it's really hard to say. It's a good question about attendance. Our attendance was so good at the NCAAs, but two weeks later and all these other events that came about, I think it's going to be a heck of a track meet. So I think that uh, the Eugene people, the people who love track and field, I believe they're all going to be there, just as they always do. So I have ultimate confidence that our attendance would be good. Right now, I, uh, I assume it's going to be great. It is supposed to be high 90s, closer to 100 for that weekend, though. I mean, do you think yeah. that it's going to have any effect on the attendance or the results? I think it's going to be a great, great days to come out and watch the track meet. Hot weather is a really good thing. I think for the, I think for the athletes, they'd much rather. And I am so excited that after 10 years, I'm able to apologize for the hot weather. <laughs> It'll be cooler than Sacramento last year. That's right. Yep, I assume it will be. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks.